in in Tennessee, and and so it's always good to be here. And uh, you know, I'm glad you got a long time because you know I ain't got I didn't get to preach Easter Sunday, so you know, um, so you're gonna catch a double bang. No, I'm just kidding. We won't. We won't. Um, and all. But it's good to see you tonight. If you have your Bible with you, a copy of God's Word, we're going to ask you to turn from Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Somebody has said that the um, if you want to see the popularity of the church, uh, check the crowd on Sunday morning. If you want to check how popular the preacher is, check the crowd on Sunday night. If you want to find out how popular Jesus is, check out the crowd on Wednesday night. Now, I don't know how true all that is, uh, but it seems like uh, a lot of churches I've been around, you can almost, you can almost see that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, somebody said, and, and it's been said through the years, that the Wednesday night crowd a lot of times is the crane, the backbone of the church. Um, uh, you know, whether you see yourself that way or not, uh, this is a message tonight. Uh, for a Wednesday night crowd, I'll tell you in advance. A Wednesday night crowd. I'll also tell you something else in advance. Uh, you, you've heard me preach enough, uh, as you guessed, uh, that that um, most of the time I t I teach and preach exegetically, meaning I I, I take a passage and just go verse by verse and explain the application and and and, and all. Uh, tonight um, we're going to do some. Uh, application, but we're gonna. Uh, you got, glad you got your jogging shoes on a little bit tonight, because we're gonna we're gonna jog through the scriptures just a little bit to a few places. I'm gonna be more topical tonight, and uh, with this thought in mind, what difference has the resurrection made in your life? What difference has the resurrection uh, made in your life? If you found your place in the copy of God's Word that you have with you in Revelation chapter 12, I want you to follow with me uh, from uh, verse 10 through uh, 12 in, in this chapter. And I, But I'm going to ask you to stand with me if you're able to as we focus our attention upon God's Holy Word given to you and me to teach us God's revelation. It rebukes us in our sin when we willfully sin. It brings correction to us because there are times we just sin and we just didn't realize what we've done. But then it also teaches how to walk in holiness before Him. Revelation chapter 12, beginning at verse 10. And John writing, he says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ for the resurrection of our brethren is cast down which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and, and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he... He has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Father God, I thank you that you gave John these words to write many years ago while he was exiled to the island of Patmos. But Father, even though it was written to a first century church, it still speaks to a 21st century church today. And so Father, I pray that you would teach us, you would challenge us, and then, Father, when we'll go away from here, we go away with the new encouragement from your scriptures, the new conviction from your scriptures. And then, Father, that you will uh, help us as we seek to be all that you've called us to be. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. We've just got through celebrating Easter season. Uh, the world has celebrated Easter with Easter eggs and... Sunday brunch and baby chicks and maybe a new outfit or two. Uh, well, the church is celebrating. And we celebrated also when we, uh, a lot of churches, as this church did, uh, had Easter egg hunt and uh, uh, had new dresses on. And, and uh, some people got a, a, a good deal on a fresh ham. And, uh, you know, and by the way, Jesus would not have eaten ham, uh, just in case you want to know. And, uh, but I don't know about you, but, but, but it seems like lately in, in churches, and when I'm saying lately, I'm talking about over the last three or four or five years. It seems like there's less and less and less talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Mm -hmm. even, even churches 
or are, are, are kind of mentioning it in a precursory way, in, in kind of a glancing way. They're not spending a whole lot of time about it. I, I don't know about you, but uh, that bothers me a little bit. Uh, there, there was a move back when the uh, 1991 Baptist hymnal uh, was published to take everything and every reference to the blood out. Well, I'm sorry if you take out the blood, uh, you take about what paid for our sins, you know. I love that old gospel hymn that says, what can wash away my sin? What is it? Nothing but what? The blood of Jesus. In fact, the scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness and remission of our sins. We've got to have the blood. And we've got to talk about not only did Jesus come to die, he didn't come to stay dead, he came to rise from the dead. And so we, we've, got to, we've got to somehow bring back the resurrection of Jesus Christ back to the forefront. Because yes, he died on the cross taking your sin and punishment for your sin and chastisement for your sin and my sin upon himself. He, he, he requited God's wrath upon him as he, he uh, kept back and held back God's wrath from being poured upon us. And somehow we've lost that in our churches today. And, uh, and so, but the question I want to ask you and myself tonight is this. What difference has the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead made in your life? In Revelation chapter, chapter 12, verse 11, look what it says in, in the last part of verse 11. Let's just read all of verse 11. And they overcame him, meaning the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, praise God for the blood, and by the word of their testimony... <coughs> Now, the word of their testimony was this. I'm saying, I've confessed my sin. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin. He was buried and he rose again. And I have trust. I have a complete trust and faith in that. And I've given my trust trust to Jesus Christ as to be my Lord and Savior. And so they made, they made the testimony themselves. And it says, and they loved not their lives unto the death. After Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The 11 remaining original disciples, because remember Judas, he went out and killed himself after he took the 30 pieces of silver and realized what they was doing to Christ. He went and tried to give it back and said, no, we don't. And he was so filled with remorse and he was so filled with, with pride also that kept him from going to see Jesus and said, Jesus, forgive me. I want to be restored. He was so filled with pride even though he was so remorseful and so tore up about it that he just went out and hung himself and killed himself. Now, that's not a lesson. That, that's a lesson for you and me. Don't be so prideful that you're not willing to go be forgiven and restored. But anyway, that's a whole other story, whole other sermon, and, and everything. But the eleven remaining disciples, they went to their dying day, lived to their dying day, defending and saying, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. We saw it with our eyes. It made a difference in our lives. And we ain't going back. And we ain't backing back now. That's right. and, and, and so they did that. And so they, they defended the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. But what about you? Let me ask you a question. And, and these are not judgment questions. They, they, they're just a couple of questions. Did you go to an Easter egg hunt? Or, 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 or you, you enjoyed Easter egg hunts or, or did, you, did you go one or did, maybe you hosted one at your house for your grandkids or something like that. Maybe you colored eggs or dyed eggs or whatever you call it. Um, I always call them coloring eggs, but anyway. Maybe you gave away an Easter basket to somebody. Uh, you know, the stores are full of them, the giant baskets like this. And, or maybe, maybe you, um, like my family, we purchased new Easter outfits. Um, to go and get one of those, you know, you know, Harvey's and Food Line and IGA, man, they was all having sales on fresh hams and fresh ham, new hams and, and everything. Maybe you went, but we bought a ham and we didn't eat it for Easter, but anyway, we, we bought a ham. Did you take time during this Easter season to enjoy the festivities like that? And in the midst of any of that, did you ever tell anybody about Jesus Christ and the resurrection from the dead? Saturday, I was finishing handing out some goodie bags to our neighbors. And about three or four times a year, we go out to our neighborhood. We have about 30 houses around us. And, um, and we go to 
the 30 houses, and it gives us an opportunity to interact with some of our neighbors. A lot of them are at home when we go by, and, uh, and so we'll leave them something on the door. And, and this, this year, we left them a, a little box of jelly beans. And an Easter egg that had a note inside. It had our Jenny and my name and telephone number on it. And it says, he's not here. He is risen just as he said inside the Easter egg. So you actually had to open it up and find out there wasn't actually nothing inside that Easter egg. And, uh, but then we also had inside there a DVD that said it was called The Case for Christ. Lee Strobel, Lee Strobel used to be um, uh, on, on staff at the Chicago Tribune. He was an atheist. And he decided, I'm going to put a, I, I, my, his wife had gotten saved. He said, I'm going to just shame her and put them Christians all the shame and everything. And so he, uh, he started an expose to, to prove that Christ was, was just a farce, that he had died and he's still there and, and all that. And doing his research, he, he got saved. And anyway, it's been a big movie out lately, uh, of the same name, and uh, he's got some good books. But anyway, uh, and so we have a copy. We, we got copies of that and gave every one of our neighbors. And all. Um, Saturday, as I was going around, one of my neighbors was out, out back, and he was trying to put up one of these um, uh, outdoor porches kind of thing. You know, you had to put them together, and his girlfriend and, and her daughter and, and all. They was out there trying to do it. And they, I mean, they short people. You know, I'm tall. I can stand there and hold it. And they were trying to, and I said, listen, let me finish doing what I'm doing. I'll come back. And they said, okay, yeah, whatever. And, and I went back, and I helped. And you know what I got a chance to do after we got the, Got finished doing that, sat down and chit chatted. He got talking about hurting and different things like that, and I, it, it, and I had a chance to tell him about Jesus. Talk to him about Jesus. Why? Uh, why? You know, I like bunnies. My granddaddy used to dress a mean rabbit. Man, I tell you what, it was good. Anyway, and, 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 but but listen, I, I enjoy Easter stuff. But but the thing about Easter, we got to tell somebody about Jesus. And, and so so I got to do that. But 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 it's sad that, that and, I, and I'm gonna say quote unquote Christians. It, it's sad that more Christians find joy in Easter eggs and Easter bunnies than sharing the reason for the season with the lost world around us. We 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 find it we find it better. As Christians often to, to whine about the world that's going to hell in the handbasket than to follow what Jude says over in Jude chapter 1, verses 20 and 20, uh, 20 through 23. Look with me at that. Uh, just keep your Bible because we're going to go to a couple of passages and we're going to actually end back up to Revelation. Jude chapter 20. I'm sorry, Jude is only one chapter. Jude verses 20 through 23. Notice what he, Jude writes. Uh, the half-brother of Jesus says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto the eternal life. And, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Now get this, verse 23. But others, look what it says, But others save with fear, Pulling them out of the fire and hating even the garment that has been spotted by the flesh. That's tough. And that ain't got nothing to do with cute bunnies and some, some colorful chicks. But it's got everything to do with love and compassion. Because that's what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. He looked down into the very fires of hell that we were doomed and damned to. And he reached down and he grabbed us. Hated even the garment stained by the flesh. And, and he pulled us out. And he rescued us and he delivered us. But a lot of times we, we, we don't even want to talk about people being lost. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul is writing in his second letter to the Corinthian church about some, some, some uh, issues. And uh, in chapter 1, he dealt with some problems in the church. Chapter 2, our, our letter to Second Corinthians is actually a more uh, ambulatory kind of kind of uh, letter, conciliatory, where he is praising them and telling them about some good things. And so a lot of times we use the verses that fail in Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. To say why well, lost people are lost. Look what, look what Paul writes. He says, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now here's what we want to say. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. In other words, that the, the devil, Satan himself, has put blinders on them so they won't believe the gospel message. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into, uh, upon them. And we want to say, well, you know, well, well, the reason they, <coughs> excuse me, reason they lost is, you know, the devil has put blinders over their eyes. And, 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 and I believe that because that's what the word of God says. But maybe the devil has put blinders on us too and we don't see the need to evangelize. 
and to disciple. That's right. And to fellowship. Now, fellowship is more than sitting down and eating a biscuit with one another. Fellowship is about building relationships with each other over a meal. Maybe, if, 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 maybe, maybe the devil has, has put a blind on our eyes to the importance of prayer or ministry to one another or missions, reaching out to those who don't know. There are people even here in this community that don't know Jesus Christ. And I would even say there's even some probably in this community who has never heard of Jesus Christ in a proper way. Other than getting the hand slammed in the door and somebody will say the name Jesus Christ. That's a cuss. Listen, we, we, we no longer have lost people in our circles. We don't even talk about lost people in churches and in, in prayer requests anymore. We, we, don't, we don't call them lost anymore. You know what we say? Well, they good people. But I just don't understand why they're so good and they just don't go to church. Let me tell you why they don't go to church. Most of them are lost. That's right. Uh, lost people don't just show up at church unless they hear, hey, maybe there's something going on that I, that, that, that I need. Lost people, lost people do what lost people do. Though, listen, somebody has said those who prefer their own pursuits have unknowingly made Satan their God. Amen. Those who prefer their own pursuits have unknowingly made Satan their God. Now, I believe we got a lot of saved people here tonight. I'm trusting we got saved people here tonight. But listen, my friends and my brothers and sisters, when we pursue our own stuff with the void of thinking about God in the situation, we have taken the reins from God, not losing our salvation, but we have taken the reins from God and saying, here, you lead to me. Because one ruler or the other is going to rule us and lead us. So the question remains, what difference has the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead made in your life? Look what else Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse 5. He says, we preach, not ourselves. In other words, he said, I'm not out building myself up. I'm not out here saying you've got to trust in me. He, he says, it's not about me. He says, but I am preaching who? Jesus Christ, the Lord. And he says, and ourselves, your servants, for Christ's sake. He said, we have come to serve you and to tell you about Jesus Christ because it's about what he has done. It's not about what we have done. It's, listen, it's not about what we've done. It's not about us cleaning up our act because, listen, we can clean up our act and, and fake, fake being saved. We can, we can clean up our language. We can start going to church and acting like a bunch of church people and still be lost and going to hell. Listen, it's, it's about what Jesus Christ has done and is doing right now and is going to do yet that's on the days to come. You know, that's why he, that's why one of his names is, is the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is and who was and what and who is still coming again. And praise God for that. You know, listen, listen, G, Paul said, I'm not preaching about me. I'm preaching Jesus Christ, who is the Lord. He is the ruler. He is the maker. He is the one who is over all. He is the one worthy of praise. And that is the one we ought to do. But then he, he, this comes on the heels of something he says back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look at this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. This is a verse we don't like. In fact, there are many people who wish... Paul's pen would have stumbled him and ran out of ink before he ever wrote 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19. Look what he says. If in this life only we have hope in Jesus Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Other translation says to be pitied above all. We're the most pitiable people. If only in this life we have hope in Christ that He's cleaned us up, that He's made us better people, that He has done this for us and He has done that for us, but we don't have any hope beyond this life. And when we die, we die, and that's it. And He says, We're the most pitiable people there ever should be. <clears throat> but I hear Christians, and you hear them too. They go on, Man, I just can't wait for Jesus to come back. Now, I believe we ought to be watching and waiting. I believe the scripture teaches that. But, 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 but watching and waiting 
It's not about, well, you know, I, I just can't wait to, to get out of here because we, well, I'm hoping for his return because, you know, I'm tired of this pain that I'm in. I, I'm tired of all these bills that I got. I, I just want to leave this old world behind. I'm looking for a new body, man. I, you know, and we can go on and on and on about that. But listen to me, my friend. Jesus Christ is coming back, and I believe He is. I believe the Scripture teaches that, and I believe that with all of my being. I believe that He is coming back, but He is not coming to give you an escape from this world. He is not coming just to say, well, you know, oh, oh Sally, I, I'm sorry you're having oh, such arthritis pain. And let me just get you out of the arthritic pain and I'm going to just take you on to heaven. That's not what he's doing, man. Oh, Joe, I, I know you're down in your back and you got heart problems and, 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 and your feet hurt because of diabetes. And, and Joe, I'm going to just take you out of here just to get you all. He's not coming for that reason. He's coming back to be known as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. That's right. To take us to the home that he's already prepared for us. Paul tells us in, in first, it's in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, he tells us this. Before the foundations of the earth were ever laid, God called you to be holy and blameless before him. When he's coming back, it's for his glory, not to give us an escape out of here. Go back to Revelation chapter 22. Because, see, we want to forget these words that Jesus says. When we talk about him coming back and, and we're getting out of here, I'm going to get this new body, I'm going to get some new teeth and some new hair, I'm going to get some new eyes, and going to get, get rid of all these pains. Listen, that's not why he's coming back. Notice what he says in, in, in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. He says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward, some translations use recompense, is with me to give every man according to his works shall they. Now what he's saying here is, is this. When I come back, I've got a reward. I've got a recompense I'm going to give you. Now, now we, we, don't, we don't understand what a reward or recompense is. It, it's a repayment. It's a reward based upon what you have done, not what you've said you've done. That's right. You who have punched time clocks through the years... How many times have your boss man come up and said, how many hours did you work this week? And you say, oh, I worked about 40, 40 <laughs> hours, 45, 50 hours. And he just take your word for it or did he say, show me your time sheet? Show me your time sheet. Show me your time clock. And you know why? He's going to pay you based upon what you've done, not what you're telling him you've done. Mm-hmm. When I work, I, I work down at Cole's uh, department store. Y'all come to see me down there, and you got some good deals, and just say, you know, come down to come down to Cole's. I, I help unload trucks early in the morning, uh, two, three days a week. Every day I go in, you know what I got to do? I got to go punch in my number in the time clock and hit shift start. They're not going to just take my word for it in the office that I showed up that day. They want to know physically and in and, 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 and real time that I showed up and I worked. And, and, all. and so recompense is not work and not according to what you profess, but, but it's according to your deeds. And listen, your faith will, 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 your faith must show itself in action. But your works are not going to save you, but it is a reflection of what you're professing and what you are confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. See, when Jesus Christ comes back and he says, behold, I'm coming back and I'm going to reward you. I'm going to recompense you. You know what he, you know, it, it's two different types of recompense. You who are believers in the Lordship of Jesus Christ and giving yourself to him. When Jesus comes back the second time and, and the trumpet sounds and the sky splits and, and what's known as the rapture come. And we who are believers will meet, be gathered up and meet him in the air. And those who are already dead are going to rise up out the ground and go meet us there. I don't know how all that's going to happen, but praise God, it's going to do it one day. And what's going to happen, when that happens, he's going to, we'll get ushered into the, into the great throne room of, Jesus, of God. And we're going to stand before God. He's going to say, Welcome home and go on in and because you get to go into heaven, okay? Because you've been saved. Now, once you get into heaven, you know what you're going to get to do? You've got to go stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ now. And what you're going to do before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, and you can read this in Matthew 12 and Romans 14, and what you're going to do, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ, and here's what he's going to say. From the very moment that you first professed faith in me, what have you done? 
You're going to be judged on everything you've done, everything you said, everything you shouldn't have said, everything you should have done, but you didn't do. Or And, and, every, and on and on we can go. Things that God said, James, you need to do this. And I said, nope, I ain't going to do it. I'm going to do my own thing. I'll get to it in a little while. Everything I didn't do, I'm going to get judged for. Everything I did that I shouldn't have done, I'm going to get judged for. Everything I, I said that I, anyway, it's all going to get there. And that's where hay, wood, fire, and stubble, and gold is going to come out. Not losing my salvation, but that's where I'm going to get my reward. But you who don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when this trumpet sounds, you know what's going to happen? Where'd he go? I heard that noise. That, and, and when it says that, the, that there's going to be a trumpet sound, it's going to be a sound that it really is, the, the, the Greek really lends, lends itself to say it's a sound that will rattle all sounds. People's going to say, well, how will you know Jesus Christ came back? You're going to know. Ain't nobody not going to know. It's going to happen, okay? You're going to know. And people are going to start saying, what happened? Here's what's going to happen. If you are lost and you are left behind, you're not going to have the Holy Spirit presence here keeping back sin and hell from you. Hell is going to be turned loose wide open. You think it's bad now? This, uh, this, is, this, is, this is a picnic compared to what's going to happen. This is a cruise ship happening right now compared to what's going to happen when, when Christians are out here because they've been praying and keeping back, keeping back the forces of the darkness. The Holy Spirit's been keeping back the forces of the darkness. But when the rapture happens, all that's gone. And you're going to find out what hell on earth really is like. You really will. And, and, and not only that, not only that, um, you're going you're gonna to be experiencing, uh, according to, to Revelation chapter 16, God's going to be pouring out the bowls of wrath. And there's going to be trumpet sounds. And this is going to happen. That's going to happen. And, and wrath of God is going to be poured out. And it's going to say that, that he's doing that so they will turn to him in repentance. But here's what it says in Revelation chapter 16. And it says that, that they still refuse to repent. They still refuse to repent. In fact, they will even go to the point of cursing God who loves them to the very end. He said, how can you do this to me? The reason he's doing it is because he loves you and he's drawing you to himself. You've been saying, I want to see what well, I'm going to live apart from God. When you're finding out what living apart from God, and, and that ain't nothing to, to actually, actually get in hell to. That's just a taste of it, a foretaste. My friends, listen, if Jesus Christ had not been resurrected, I, I love some, what somebody wrote, I, I wrote it down. If Jesus Christ had not been resurrected, our sin would not be forgiven, nor would we have hope of eternal life. If what Christians believe is a lie, we would be pitiful because we would be going through suffering for no purpose. Fortunately, praise God, that is not the case. See, the question remains. What difference has the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead made in your life? Can I say sadly, the truth for most people who profess faith in Jesus Christ, it means absolutely nothing. They're just good people going to church. We've got so caught up in celebrating Easter Bunny and brightly colored eggs and then we are the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now let me say something before you call your chairman of deacons or your pastor. I'm okay having Easter Bunny parties and Easter egg parties. I'm okay with having that. As a, because that is a launching plan, that is identification that lost people <coughs> use for Easter. And when you get them in, tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Use what they know so you can tell them about Jesus. Listen, it's not about celebrating this Easter egg. It's not about us running after the Easter bunny. It's about the man who died for your sin and my sin. He was buried and he rose again and gave his new life. That egg's not giving you nothing. It's going to probably give you some indigestion. And I'm okay doing that. There was one year, every Easter egg I had, I dyed black. I got it black as could get. I mean, black as this thing. I mean, it was black. And Jenny said, what in the world are you doing? And I had a whole dozen of these things, maybe a dozen and a half of these things. And we was having an Easter egg a carnival at, at, at a church I was at. And, and, um, and here's what I would do. I would walk up to people. I, I said, uh, and I would just hold my Easter egg. I said, you got an Easter egg? They said, yeah. I said, I, said, I got one. They're going, it's black. And I said, yeah. They said, I've never seen a black Easter egg. 
Some said, ooh, that's a nasty bucket. Others said, oh, that's so pretty. I want it. I said, it's not for you. I said, you know, the Bible says that our, compares darkness in our life, to, or sin in our life to darkness. It's a darkness. It, it, it's sin. And I said, but here's what God said. He said, when he forgives you for your sin, he casts as far as the east is from the west. And I gave it to the person. I said, how far can you throw this? And they would take it and they would throw that, just chunk that thing. And they would watch it go. And it would hit the ground and go into smithereens. I said, let's go out there and pick it up and eat it. And they said, no, that's nasty. Why do you want to hold on to your sin? And they're going, I understand. Listen, he took away the nastiness. Why do we want it? Why do we want it? Listen, there was a recent article by George Barnard just published last week, March 27, 2018. And, and, and in this article, you, you might have read it in the newspaper or some of your news feeds or something other, and it says this, 51% of churchgoers today says they don't know what the Great Commission is. 51% of people who go to church on a regular basis says they do not know what the, what the, um, what the Great Commission is. Maybe that's why we're not having people going. Maybe that's why we're not having people being saved. Look what Paul says in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. A familiar passage that we need to be mindful of as we think in what difference does the resurrection of Jesus Christ make in our lives. Romans chapter 10 beginning at verse 6. Paul writes, But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in thine heart. Don't you, in other words, he said, don't you say, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who shall ascend into depths, that is to bring Christ up from the dead? He said, but what does your heart say? Word is nigh 